Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I build these boxes. First, I cut all pieces of plywood that I'm going to use. I use frog tape to protect the wood from chipping and tear outs. Using my guide drill, I made sure my cuts are nice and straight. This is a very simple jig that I made myself. All I needed is two pieces of leftover plywood with the original edge that is straight. Then I screwed them together, simple as that. You can also avoid chipping or tear outs by using a different blade that has more teeth, known as a plywood cutting blade. Since I didn't have this blade, I still had some chipping, but much less using a tape. Another tip. If you don't have a circular saw, simply use a hand saw and this easily made jig. All you need is two pieces of wood, you choose the length, but make sure each of them has at least one original straight edge. Then, with the help of a third small piece, place them close to each other that only your hand saw blade can fit. Make sure they are parallel to each other. Now you can make a straight cut with your hand saw. I use this method to show you that it's easily done without any circular saw. After I cut all the pieces, I sanded them. With my circular saw, I cut out a square shape where I place the cane later on. To avoid making my cuts too long, I made sure that I stopped a little bit before my mark ends. This will prevent any unnecessary mistakes. I use my hand saw to finish these cuts properly. Then, with my router, I made a 1 cm deep and wide cut around the inner edges, where I will place the cane and the decorative edge. The router edge guide was very helpful in this situation. I placed on the other side of the wood that helped me to make very clean and straight cuts and stop the router going deeper. I did the same to all of the pieces that will be the front and the back of the boxes. As you can see, I couldn't make square edge cut with the router, so off camera, I used my chisel to finish the corners. After that, I made the base of the boxes. I used wood glue and nails for this. I kept checking the angle, but I realized that it's not very important, since the front and back piece of the box will stretch them to 90 degrees. Then it was time to give them a layer of birch wood stain. This barely made any changes of the color of the wood, but helped to bring out some highlights and details. The next step was to cut the cane on size. 
This is an artificial cane webbing. It does look pretty good in my opinion. Since this is made of plastic, no need to be soaked in water. You can use it straight away and can be easily cut with normal scissors. Not to mention that it's much cheaper than the real cane. Then back to the wood staining. Meanwhile, I cut the decorative edge in a 45 degrees angle. I used my jigsaw to get this job done. I made a little channel to hold them while I do the cuts. This made my job easier and faster. When the wood stain dried, two layers of poly were applied. This protects the wood from scratches and discoloration. Since the cane was bending too much, I had to bend it to the other way around. This made it straight again. After checking everything fits nicely, I used wood glue to place the cane in the routed area, then the decorative edge on top of this. Then repeat the same on the other pieces. As a final step I attach the front and back panel of the box using wood glue and nails once again. If you have any question feel free to leave in the comment section below. If you are going to use the boxes to store clothes, I recommend to put a lining fabric inside to avoid any damage from the wood. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification, leave a comment and like the video. You can find us also on Facebook and Instagram.